Hi Jenny, hi everyone. I just wanted to respond to uh, your video. This is like kind of my topic, so I felt like um, I would really like to just, you know, chime in with my top five and uh, disappointing five lists. Um, so I'll, I'll try to do this succinctly. I've done this a couple of times and um, I get long-winded because I'm so passionate about the topic. Anyway, um, top five favorite TV shows, and I do want to add the disclaimer that this list may be different tomorrow, and um, and it's definitely been way different in the past. And uh, so here we go. These are my top five, and I think the the top couple, the top three or three of them, uh, probably will never change. Um, maybe in order, but not that they're on the list. Anyway, um, number five. Uh, I just wanted to say the Rachel Maddow show is pretty awesome. I love Rachel. I love that she gets an hour to talk to us about, you know, this, the, the things that she's passionate about. And it's not all politics. She talks a lot about politics, and she really, really digs in and learns a lot about her topic before she speaks. And I find that I generally find her thoughtful on any subjects that she picks up. She also talks about, you know, uh, cocktails. That's another thing she's passionate about, mixed drinks. And, you know, who who, who couldn't love somebody that will spend, devote time in a political television show to mixed drinks? And, uh, you know, I love the, the moments of geek where she, like, just goes off on some topic that's of interest to her. Okay, we'll stop there. That's enough about Rachel. I love Rachel. Anyway, um, number four um, is Caprica. Uh, Caprica, also I include um, Battlestar Galactica in that, but I want to start with the beginning of the story, which is Caprica, and um, I find Caprica a really beautiful story. Um, I, you know, just like the story of the families and, and how things are all, how, how things are so messed up and, and trying to, you know, and, and yeah, it's just really nicely done, uh, brilliant visually. Um, great storytelling. Um, I would have to say that one of my favorite um, TV people, you know, producer, writer people is is definitely um, Ronald Moore, and uh, he, you know, he's done several of my favorite shows, and this probably Caprica probably tops the list for me. Um, next on the list, number three is one that's also on your list, Jenny. It's uh, Firefly. I just I am I'm so devastated that that show never got beyond uh, 14 episodes in a movie. Um, that really needed to be more. Um, I think that you know everybody knows the story. It was kind of sabotaged by the network, but it's it's brilliant storytelling. It's great characters, lovely dialogue, just really amazing humor, sad, poignant, really great stuff. My second favorite show of all time is um, uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Um, Monty Python's Flying Circus was um, was um, like what the Beatles were to rock music, uh, Monty Python was to comedy and to television in general in my mind. Um, it was every form of comedy, brilliantly done, um, everything was multi-layered, it was it was uh, satire, burlesque, um, parody, um, surrealism, slapstick, and it was not afraid to take on anything and to be anything. There are places in that show that, that are meant to horrify you, that are not meant to be funny, and those, are, those just like add into the brilliance of the show for me, because it was unafraid of, to tackle anything. and. Um, and I just really admire it. And uh, so number one um, should have been uh, Northern Exposure for me, but the guy who did the best um, seasons of Northern Exposure had another show later that I think is um, in, in too many ways better um, to not be named the number one show on my list, and that's The Sopranos. Um, you would think that somebody with my kind of interest in like fantasy fiction and uh, speculative fiction would not be so mired to um, to something that's so 
you know, mundane and day to day in a lot of ways, but the show is, it's very spiritual. And I think it's, um, I think at the heart of that show for me was just that it's about the experience of living the American dream. And, you know, people who have jobs that, that, that they don't love or that are just, you know, for some reason hard to deal with and get having and, and using that as the means to live their life, you know, to be to to support the kind of life they have. And and Tony has that upper middle class life and his kids want for nothing and his wife wants for nothing but him. And that's very much in line. And uh, I just thought it was brilliant. The first season of that show is possibly the most completely perfect season of television ever made, in my opinion. Um, okay, so let's move on to the um, five most disappointing movies. And um, I won't spend a lot of time on this. I can see I'm already going long, long, long. I, I'm so passionate about this stuff. Anyway, um, number five is the Flintstones movie. Um, oh my God, what was that? Um, John Goodman is the perfect casting for the part he got. I actually have no problem with any of the casting. Um, I just didn't find it visually very great to look at. It looked kind of trashy to me. And um, I didn't like the story that much. The comedy all fell flat. It's like, I, in a way, I feel like that movie should just never have been made. Um, okay, so number four is a movie, I don't know if you'll remember it, but it's a movie starring David Duchovny and um, someone named Orlando Jones, whose career was pretty much killed by this movie. It's called Evolution. It came out about 10 years ago. Um, don't bother. <laughs> Just really don't bother. It was uh, really sad. I had hopes for Orlando Jones, but he, um, he just got attached to this movie and it killed his career. Um, number three, um, the point that I really lost it with M. Night Shyamalan, um, who I had really had a lot of attachment to and, and stuck with after people had started to say, oh, he's not that great, until The Lady in the Water, um, which is so completely contrived and um, that I just couldn't buy it. And, and it was, I had been championing this guy uh, against whatever else was being said about him by others because I thought there were things that were great. Even in this movie, there are things that really work. I love a lot of the cinematography. Um, the tone that he has, is the pacing in his films is just really brilliant. But the storytelling was just, it was like, what are you even thinking? It's, it just didn't work for me. Um, so number two um, is George Lucas's trashing of his own best work with uh, The Phantom Menace, the first of the, uh, of the new uh, Star Wars trilogy. And uh, everybody's talked about the reasons that that movie doesn't work for them. And, you know, uh, you can point to specific characters and you can point to um, terrible wooden dialogue and wooden acting. Um, and all of those are true and I agree with them and I think that it was like it was such a clear trashing of the the mythic thing that he had created with the original Star Wars that it's just it's it's really seriously disappointing um, there are moments in that movie that really work for me some of the visuals are just brilliant 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 um, but the story just kind of left me feeling kind of ripped off really and uh, so but See, that wasn't the point where I realized that George Lucas wasn't wasn't going to continue to be the storyteller he had started out and shown himself to be for like the first part of his career, like his original movie that he made at first as a student film, THX 1138, brilliant film. Um, American Graffiti um, was really great. He stepped outside his kind of science fiction wheelhouse and just made a coming of age story that's a really, really good movie. And then he went back to that with the original Star Wars. Brilliant movie. The next movie after that, Empire Strikes Back, is definitely in my top five movies of all time. Um, and after he finished the Star Wars, the original Star Wars trilogy, 
he made a movie called Howard the Duck, which is my number one most disappointing movie of all time. I had been a Howard the Duck fan, and I had been a, you know, a George Lucas fan big time. And um, that movie tried to be all things to all people. It tried to be an action adventure special effects movie. It tried to be a kid's movie because it had a cute duck in it. And treating Howard as a cute duck is so far from what Howard was supposed to be about. That was supposed to be the absurd, ironic thing. And it was also ironic social commentary uh, humor. And, and he got none of those right. And um, it was really the, the point for me that I was like really clear that George Lucas had lost whatever he'd had and probably due to success. Anyway, those are my those are my five most disappointing and I've gone on just as long as any other time I've talked about this and I do apologize for um, taking so long um, but thanks for listening those of you who still are and um, back to your regularly scheduled Tranny Star Galactica <laughs>